Good morning everyone. Blessed Sunday po sa lahat. Sa atin pong mga kapatiran dito sa Baguio, sa Bayambang Pangasinan, at sa Kamiling Tarlac po. At sa lahat po ng nanonood ngayon, Blessed Sunday po ulit. I hope that you are excited to praise and worship our God. Amen? Praise the Lord. So, let's read Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 6 to 9. For you are a people holy to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you out of all the peoples on the face of the earth to be his people, his treasured possession. The Lord did not set his affection on you and choose you because you were more numerous than other peoples, for you were the fewest of all the peoples. But it was because the Lord loved you and kept the oath he swore to your ancestors that he brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the land of slavery, from the power of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And verse 9, Know therefore that the Lord your God is God. He is the faithful God, keeping his covenant of love a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commandments. Praise God. Moses is clear in verses 6 to 8 that the Lord's favor on Israel is not due to their inherent significance. Hindi daw po dahil sa kanilang taglay na kahalagaan, no? but to his own particular love for them. So dahil po sa kanyang pag-ibig. It was not because they were special or great that he chose them and redeemed them. He chose them and redeemed them unconditionally because he loves them and is faithful to his promises. God's particular love is for a particular people. And the particular people described in verse 9 are those who love him and keep his commandments. So, balik naman po tayo sa doon sa nagmamahal sa Diyos at sinusunod yung kanyang commandments. The condition of loving God in keeping his commandments in verse 9 is dependent upon his grace as is the unconditional situation described in verses 7 to 8. God's faithfulness and love is for those who love Him. And those who do this only, those who because of God's free grace of work within them. This faithfulness and steadfast love of God in Deuteronomy 7, 9 has been fully revealed in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. For sinners, the work of Christ and all its benefits are only for whoever believes in John 3.16 and only for the one who has faith in Jesus. So Romans 3.26 So let us hear Deuteronomy 7.9 and know the Lord for who he is being reminded of this marvelous grace to make us the beneficiaries of such wonder. So basahin po natin ulit yung verse 9. Know therefore that the Lord your God is God. He is the faithful God keeping his covenant of love of a thousand generation of those who love him and keep his commandments. So ang atin pong Diyos ay faithful po no kapag tayo po ay ay sumunod lamang sa kanya. So yung pangako na yun ay particular do sa yung Israel, Israelita no at iyon din po ay pangako niya sa atin. Siya ay ang makapangyarihan sa lahat no. So wala pong imposible sa kanya. Basta lang po tayo ay mag-abide sa Kanya. So our God, He deserves praise and worship. He deserves highest praise and worship. So tayo na po ay tumayo sa ating mga upuan at tayo na po ay umawit sa Panginoon. Yes, O Lord, You are our faithful Father in heaven, O Jesus. The great God, O Lord God, aming Ama. Truly, O Lord, that you are our promise-keeping God, Lord. Ang mga pangako niyo po sa amin ay totoo lahat, Panginoon, O Lord. And Father God, Lord, as your children, O Jesus. Lord, help us to, Lord God, to abide in you, O Lord. To abide in your commandments, Panginoon, O God, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father God. We worship you, Jesus. You are powerful, O Lord. You are the great God, Lord. You are the Holy One, Panginoon. And you are the God who is a loving God. 
Thank you, Father God. We worship you, Jesus. We adore you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen, amen.
Justice has been satisfied. He will hold me fast. Race with him to endless light. He will hold me fast till our faith is turned to side. When he comes at last. Worship you, O Lord God, Ami Ama. Sinasamba po namin kayo, O Lord, sa lahat ng oras, Panginoon. You are the God who reigned forever and ever, O Jesus. Wala po kayong katulad, aming Ama, na nasa langit, Panginoon. You are the great God, Lord. You are powerful, Panginoon, O Jesus. You are marvelous, you are beautiful beyond description, O Lord, and you are our everything, Panginoon. Salamat, Panginoon, sa mga pangako mo, Panginoon, na totoo sa aming mga buhay. Na ikaw nga po, O Lord, ang aming ama na nasa langit, Panginoon, na puno ng magagandang pangako, Panginoon. And thank you, Father God, for the eternal life, O Lord Jesus. Thank you for your amazing love, Lord. Thank you for your faithfulness in our lives, O God. We worship you, Father God, O Lord. We honor your name, O Jesus, our King, our Master, our Father in heaven, O Lord, who is our uh, omniscient God, Panginoon. We worship you, Lord God. We adore you. We love you, Jesus. We praise your holy name, O God. In this we ask, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. A blessed Sunday morning, our dearest brothers and sisters. We are rejoicing in the Lord for giving us another Sunday to gather as a church, as His people, to praise and celebrate His holy name in our midst. We are, again, thankful for God's upholding this past week, and we look forward to how the Lord will speak to our hearts today as we prepare ourselves for another walk of faith this new week. So before we hear the word of the Lord, let's come before the Lord in a word of prayer. Our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you once more, Lord, for this Lord, this blessed Lord's Day, O God, that you have called all of us, O God, to gather online as your people, Father in heaven, to hear your word, O Lord God, and to once again, Lord God, be sanctified by the truth of your word. Maraming marami pong salamat, Panginoon. 
And Lord, as we hear your word, Father in heaven, we pray that the Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus, would truly sanctify our hearts. Father in heaven, open our spiritual ears, open our hearts, O Lord God, so that we may know, O Lord, what is the unfolding of your truth. We pray, Father in heaven, for the blessed illumination of the Holy Spirit who will unfold to us, O Lord God. Lord, your Lord, your eternal truths, O Lord God, so that your church, O Lord, will truly become, Lord, sanctified and, Lord, founded, O Lord God, upon your word. Maraming marami pong salamat, Panginoon. Father, we also want to thank you for everyone who is, Lord, uh, joining us this morning to attend our online Sunday service. We thank you for the life of each one, Lord. We thank you, Father in heaven, Lord God, for each one's Lord desire, O Lord, to continue to grow in the Lord, to continue to deepen, O God, in our knowledge of you. And Father, we trust, O Lord God, that you will bless and you will prosper your word in our lives and your word, Lord, will truly bear fruit, O God, among your people. We thank you, Father in heaven, for your Lord, for your church. We thank you, Father in heaven, that you have called us, O Lord, as one family here, Lord God, at Gospel of Grace. Maraming marami pong salamat, Panginoon. Hide me behind your cross, Father God, and I pray for the wisdom of the Holy Spirit all throughout. And Lord, we will be careful that all blessing, praises, and glory will only be to your name and to your name alone. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and Amen. Last week, hindi po tayo nagkaroon ng atin pong midweek prayer watch. So I'd like to announce that uh, this coming Wednesday, we will have our midweek prayer watch already okay and then of course because it's the first wednesday of it's going to be the first week of the month we are already on the second to the last month of the year and we are all, of course having our congregational prayer and fasting on wednesday so i just would like to remind all of us about our uh, congregational prayer and fasting Brethren, as you all know, uh, for those who are joining us for the first time, we are doing a series on the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. And we are now already in chapter 3. And in our study of the first half of chapter 3, which are verses 1 to 13, we are now on our fourth Sunday. So we have covered the first 13 verses of chapter 3 for the past several Sundays. And this morning, we will look at the last one. So far, we have covered Paul, the prisoner of Christ, that is in verse 1. Paul and the mystery of the gospel, that is in verses 2 to 7. Paul and his ministry to the Gentiles from verses 2, 7 to 9. And this morning, we will look at Paul and the purpose of the church from verses 10 to 13. So brothers and sisters, let us read God's word from Ephesians chapter 3. For this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles, if indeed you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace, which was given to me for you, that by revelation there was made known to me the mystery, as I wrote before in brief. By referring to this, when you read, you can understand my insight into the mystery of Christ, which in other generations was not made known to the sons of men, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets in the Spirit. To be specific, that the Gentiles are fellow heirs and fellow members of the body, and fellow partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel, of which I was made a minister according to the gift of God's grace, which was given to me according to the working of his power. To me, the very least of all saints, this grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the unfathomable riches of Christ and to bring to light what is the administration of the mystery which for ages has been hidden in God who created all things, so that the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known through the church to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose 
which he carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and confident access through faith in him. Therefore I ask you not to lose heart at my tribulations on your behalf, for they are your glory. Tingnan po natin mga kapatid ang atin pong outline para po sa umagang ito. We will find here in this verses from verses 10 to 13, Paul and the purpose of the church. And in verse 10, we will find the supreme purpose of the church. In verse 11a, the church and God's eternal purpose. And in verses 11b to 12, the purpose of the church carried out in Christ. And finally, Paul's conclusion in verse 13 is, Do not lose heart. Brothers and sisters, here in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 10, which says, So that the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known through the church. This is the second time that the word church has been used or mentioned by Paul in his letter to the Ephesians. The other one or the other time that Paul used the word church is in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 22, where it says, And he put all things in subjection under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. So these are the two instances that Paul used the word church. Ano po ba ang ibig sabihin ng salitang church? The word church in Greek is ekklesia and it means the called out ones. All right? It means the called out ones. They refer to true believers whom God has called out from this world through the saving blood of his son Jesus Christ to be his own redeemed people. And they are the body of Christ. So that's the meaning of church. They are the called out ones. They are the ones who have been redeemed by God through the saving blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, this morning, brethren, we will be looking at what is the purpose of the church, okay? What is the purpose of the church? While bringing men and women to Christ is the immediate purpose that we see in the existence of the church, the Bible tells us that we are to make disciples of all nations. So that is the immediate purpose of the church. But still, it is not the supreme purpose of the church. Okay, And we will find the supreme purpose of the church in verse 10. In verse 10, it says, So that the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known through the church, to the rulers and authorities, and the authorities in the heavenly places. Now, this is a, this is not a very long verse, but still it is packed with meaning, okay? The supreme purpose of the church will forever and always be the glory of God. Let me say that once more. The supreme purpose of the church will forever and always be the glory of God. The church is not an end in itself. Rather, the church is a means to an end. And that end, brothers and sisters, is the glorification of God. Amen po? The glorification of God. How is God glorified through the church according to Ephesians chapter 3, verse 10? It says here that God is glorified through the church by the manifold wisdom of God that is now being made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. Now, who are the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places? These are the heavenly invisible beings or the angelic hosts, both the good and the evil. All right? So when we Talk about the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. These are the angelic hosts, okay? The invisible, heavenly angelic hosts, both the good and the evil. 
Brethren, alam niyo po ba that the good angels have always tried to decipher God's plan for the redemption, okay, of the world, the redemption of man. According to 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 12, salvation, the suffering of Christ and the glories that would follow were things into which angels long to look. Okay? All of these things, the details about salvation, the sufferings of Christ, and the glories that would follow, ito daw po ay mga bagay na gustong-gustong, ano po, tinitingnan, sinisipat, ano po, ng mga anghel. These good angels have always been excited about God's plan of redemption. Amen po? They have always been excited about God's plan of redemption. So God's purpose for the church is that through it, okay, through the church, God's manifold wisdom will now be made known to the angels. Okay? Now again, both to the good and the evil angels. Now, let's try to digest this verse by looking at this verse piece by piece. Okay? First, what is the manifold wisdom of God? Okay? What does it mean when it says that the church will make known the manifold wisdom of God to these angelic hosts? Ano po ba yung manifold wisdom of God? Wisdom, according to A.W. Tozer, is the ability to devise perfect ends, meaning the best goals, and to achieve those ends by the most perfect means. Wisdom sees everything in focus, each in proper relation to all, and is thus able to work toward predestined goals with flawless precision. All right? I also like how John Piper describes the wisdom of God. Sabi po niya, God always knows the best goal in every situation. And He always has total and perfect knowledge of billions and billions of relevant factors in every situation that enables Him to know the best way to achieve the goal. Brothers and sisters, that is why we should always trust the wisdom of God because we do not know all relevant factors when it comes to a situation. So even if we do not understand the sovereignty of God and the things that He allows to happen in our lives, we need to trust the Lord. This is the reason why God says in Romans 11.33 that God's wisdom is rich and deep and that it is impossible for us to understand God's judgments and God's ways. All right? Ganun po kalalim, kadeep at karich ang karunungan po ng Panginoon. And that it is unsearchable. Okay? It is impossible for us to grasp the totality of the judgments of God because we are not omniscient as God, like God. God is all-knowing. Everything is plain before the eyes of God, but we are not. God's thoughts, therefore, are not our thoughts. God's ways are not our ways. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are, our, so are God's ways and God's thoughts higher than our ways and our thoughts. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. Now, why did Ephesians chapter 3, verse 10 that the church will make known the manifold wisdom of God. Again, what is the meaning of manifold? What, is, what does it mean when it says the manifold wisdom of God? The word manifold is a picture of a painting or a fabric with rich and varied colors. Okay? So, yun pong ibig sabihin ng manifold. It's like looking at a piece of painting. It's like looking at a piece of fabric. And it is full of rich and varied colors. Okay? So, in the same way, the manifold wisdom of God means God's wisdom in its rich variety. It is a multicolored wisdom. 
It is wisdom that is also multifaceted. The manifold wisdom of God is like looking at a beautiful diamond wherein whichever way you view the wisdom of God, new flashes of truth shine forth just like a diamond, okay? Wherever you view the wisdom of God, in whichever way you try to view it, there are new flashes of truth shining forth. So God's wisdom through the church is so rich beyond measure that it will cause heavenly beings to be astonished. It will cause them to be in awe of God. Okay? Now let's go to the second thing about this verse. What does the Bible mean when it says that God's manifold wisdom is being made known to the angels? What does it mean when it says it's being made known to the angels? Now, making known something is not just about imparting information the way that we read news articles or watch them. Knowing here is deeper than that. It is the Greek word ginosko, which means knowledge that one experiences for oneself. For example, we may know in theory how to drive a car or ride a bike. But to know it from experience and not just theoretical, that's ginosko. Okay? Because it means that you yourself drove a car or rode a bike and you just do not know that by theory. But you are, have experienced riding a bike or driving a car. And brethren, this is what God is accomplishing through the church right now. The heavenly hosts are knowing each day the unfolding of the manifold wisdom of God. You know, there is a commentator, his name is William MacDonald, and he puts it beautifully what it means when it says in the Bible that the manifold wisdom of God through the church is being made known to these angelic hosts. Ang sabi po niya, one of God's present purposes in connection with the mystery is to reveal His manifold wisdom to the angelic hosts of heaven. Paul again uses the metaphor of a school. God is the teacher. The universe is the classroom. Angelic dignitaries are the students. The lesson is on the multifaceted wisdom of God. The church is the object lesson. From heaven, the angels are compelled to admire his unsearchable judgments and marvel at his ways past finding out. Now, maybe all of us are wondering right now, e pa paano ba nakikita yung manifold wisdom of God through the church? Okay? How is God's manifold or w multicolored wisdom being made known through the church? You know, brethren, when Jesus was on the cross and he cried out to his father, and his father turned his back on him, and darkness fell on the earth, the good angels must have wondered, what is going on? And the fallen angels were rejoicing and saying, Aha! We've done it! We killed the son! The angels didn't understand why God the Father put Jesus his only begotten son on a cross. But through the church, brethren, the angels now see the very cross where the Lord Jesus has been killed has now become the source of life. It has now become the source of forgiveness and salvation for sinners so that they would be reconciled to God. This is indeed a testimony of the rich wisdom of God because God accomplished redemption through the horrible death of His own Son. So what seemed like defeat and victory for the evil angels is actually God's wonderful display of wisdom because that very cross that seemed like defeat, that seemed like tragedy, has now become the source of forgiveness, life, redemption of sinners. 
So, the church, which is the union of both Jews and Gentiles, is the beautiful showcase of the multicolored wisdom of God that shines from all angles. The existence of the church is also the display of God's wisdom to all heavenly beings because the church exists due to Christ's triumph at the cross. Naitindihan po natin, wala pong church kung hindi po na panagumpayan ng Panginoong Jesus ang kanyang kamatayan po sa cross. Pero dahil po may church, then the heavenly beings know that Jesus Christ has triumphed. The existence of the church would always remind the fallen angels of their coming doom. The fallen angels thought that they have defeated God when Jesus died, but they didn't see God's wisdom that God had used the cross to gain ultimate and final victory. In Colossians chapter 2, verse 15, in the NIV, it says, And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. Okay, a public spectacle means that these evil heavenly angels have been publicly publicly humiliated by God through the cross. Brethren, through the church, the angels are seeing the wonderful things that resulted from the death and the resurrection of Christ. Amen po? Through the church, the angels are seeing the wonderful things that resulted from the death and resurrection of Christ. Satan has been defeated. His plans have been frustrated. Salvation now has come to lost sinners. God's righteous name, His holy name has been vindicated. Christ has been exalted far above all rule, authority, power, and dominion, and everything else, not only in this present age, but also in the one to come. Ephesians 1, 21. You know, brethren, oftentimes we look at the church as something that is optional. Okay? Something that we can that we can take for granted given the many pressing and urgent demands of life. Alright? But we are actually part of something that is larger than life. That we are when we are part of the church. We are part of something that is going to last beyond time. It is going to last forever and ever. When all things in this world have reached their fulfillment, brethren, it would be so grand to see that it was not the governments of this world that have determined the course of history. What determined the course of history has been God's program for the church and all for the glory of God. Now let's go to the second point today. Let's look at the church and God's eternal purpose in verse 11a. It says here, let me read once more, so that the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known through the church to the rulers and the authorities in the heavenly places. Verse 11, this was in accordance with the eternal purpose which he carried out in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Brethren, the whole purpose of the universe is the glory of God. Amen po? The whole purpose of the universe is the glory of God. It is a universe in which God will one day unite all things in Christ where evil is going to be totally conquered and eradicated. Don't you look forward to that future where all things will be united under Christ and where evil is totally conquered and eradicated. This is what the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 10. The summing up of all things in Christ, things in the heavens and things on the earth. What it means by summing up of all things is that 
everything in the heavens and on the earth will be under Christ. What sin has done to destroy and to divide, Christ will one day restore into perfect harmony. The whole universe or cosmos will one day be restored back into perfection. Amen po? Everything about God's plan and His great purposes for the church in verse 11, it says, are all in line with God's eternal purpose. I like so much what the theologian F.F. F. Bruce said. The church thus appears to be God's pilot scheme for the reconciled universe of the future. Brothers and sisters, perhaps some of us are wondering or maybe we are asking this question within our hearts. If the church is making known the manifold wisdom of God, but isn't the church right now actually far from perfect? There is really no perfect church, as we often say. And you are correct. We are correct in that observation. But this is what we observe based on our own finite understanding, based on our own limited knowledge of what is now happening in the universal church of the Lord Jesus. Perhaps we are only making judgments according to what we see and what's happening in our own local churches. But we really do not know the full picture of what Christ is doing to build His church, what Christ is doing to cause God's wisdom to be displayed and to be made known to the heavenly beings. Brethren, the fact that the church exists today, that men and women continue to be transformed by the power of the gospel, that the church continues to grow the church is serving its purpose to make known the manifold wisdom of God. But you know, even this is still under a larger purpose. A purpose that actually goes beyond the confines of time. So even verse 10 is still under a larger purpose. And that which is beyond the confines of time. God's plan and purpose for the church is all in subjection to God's eternal purpose where time will be no more because it will be forever and ever. Amen? Ang ibig sabihin po nito, ang church po, tapos na po ang time, okay? Because time is measured. But the moment that we step into eternity and time will be no more, the church will still be part of God's eternal purpose. So the church exists for the glory of God and it is all in accordance with the eternal purposes of God. Amen? So the church exists and its purpose is beyond time because it is in accordance to the eternal purposes of God. Brethren, this means that we should never underestimate the church, okay? The church is not man's own idea. Because if the church was man's idea, the church should have been destroyed long time ago during the first century, during the time of the Roman Empire. But why does the church still exist up to now despite everything and it continues to grow as the gospel of Christ continues to spread far and wide? We all have heard of the Taliban takeover of Afghanistan. Tama po, nabalitaan po natin ito lahat na ang Afghanistan po ay tinakeover po ng Taliban several months ago. And a Christian magazine called Christianity Today reports that many Afghan Muslims are actually now turning to Christ. Okay? Let me read to you po a portion of this article from Christianity Today. My Christian and his wife lead a small congregation called the Afghan American Church of the Bay Area. 
This is in California. But their main ministry is not gathering with a dozen or so Afghan believers during the week. It is engaging with the tens of thousands of Afghan seekers from around the world who reach out through messaging apps, social media, and online outlets. Mike, who was born in Afghanistan and worked alongside the U.S. military, adopted the name Mike Christian after his conversion. His popular Facebook page shares Bible verses and Christian messages in Dari alongside an invitation to get in touch. The recent Taliban takeover has created a unique opportunity for some Afghan Muslims to rethink their faith, just as a massive influx of Afghan evacuees are fleeing to the United States for resettlement. It's the younger generation, and especially the women, Mike says, who are most disenchanted with Islam and most open to learning about the God of Christianity. We received tons of text messages, emails, WhatsApp, and phone calls from Afghanistan, Mike told City in an interview. They are saying, we don't like Islam. We don't want that kind of religion. We want to become a Christian. Please help us. Show us how we can become a follower of Jesus. I just keep praying, Lord, you have the power to change Afghan people, to join your church, to seek you and believe in you, to pray and repent. The couple fields hundreds of questions a day from curious Afghans, describing the good news to them and connecting new believers to nearby house churches. I am engaged with 30,000 Afghans now, said Mike. I don't remember the Lord telling me to stop. The Lord's mission is never stopped. So let's keep going. Amen po. Brothers and sisters, God has chosen the church even before the foundation of the world. Ephesians 1.4 To be holy and blameless in His eyes. And here in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 11, God's word tells us that long after this world is gone, Long after the kingdoms of this world are gone, long after millions and billions of years have passed, yet still, the church will continue to exist due to God's eternal purpose. It is all in accordance with God's eternal purpose. And that is the reason why we have that story of these Afghan Americans who are now ministering to these Afghan Muslims who want to become followers of Jesus Christ. Not even the Taliban takeover can hinder the church of the Lord Jesus Christ from moving forward. Now, this is indeed mind-blowing, and it beats any storyline from any sci-fi movie when you come to think of it, that the church has been in the heart of the Lord. It has been in the heart of God before the foundations of the world, and it is in accordance with God's eternal purpose in the future. This world will give importance to everything except the church. Tama po? No? Ang daigdig po na ito, bibigyan ng halaga ang lahat ng bagay sa mundong ito, maliban po sa church ng Panginoon. It will give importance to climate change, to endangered species, to discovering life in outer space. But the church is not significant in the overall scheme of things. The church is not newsworthy. But to the invisible world of angels, both good and evil, the thing to really watch is the church. Because the church is the center of God's program to unfold His glory. Matthew 6, 8, 16, 18, Christ said, I will build my church. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 says, Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for her. God's focus is Christ and his church. And this is according to the eternal purpose of God. Now let's go to the third and last main point for this morning. We're going to look at the purpose of the church is carried out by God 
in Christ. All right? The purpose of the church is carried out by God in Christ. That is verses 11b to 12. Again, let me read. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose, which he, referring to God, carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and confident access through faith in him. You know, brothers and sisters, the central event of history, it is not the invention of the wheel, okay? It is not the founding of Rome. It is not the birth of Confucius or Buddha. It is not the invention of the printing press, the internet, or the first landing of man on the moon. Brethren, the central event of history is the advent of Jesus Christ. It is the birth, it is the life, it is the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because the life of Christ is how God's eternal purpose is being carried out. It is in Christ. Amen po? It is in Christ. As Grant Osborne puts it, it is King Jesus the royal Messiah who has taken sovereign control of salvation history and redeemed sinful humanity from certain death. Brothers and sisters, the Lord Jesus Christ intercepted man's history. Ano po? Inintercept po ng Panginoong Jesus ang downward spiral ng history po ng daigdig, ng history po ng sangkatauhan. And the coming of Jesus Christ is therefore the central event of history. Christ Jesus, our Lord, has brought God's salvation into reality. Amen po? The coming of Jesus Christ has brought God's salvation into reality. We do not belong to the Old Testament period wherein they haven't seen yet the Messiah. They haven't known yet what it is like to have the Messiah finally arrive in this world. But us who belong to the New Testament, we are so privileged that we are now looking back to what happened in history and that is Jesus Christ was born into this world. And Jesus Christ lived the perfect life. Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. And after three days, he rose again. The coming of Christ, that is the central event of history. Because from there, we will see how God is accomplishing his eternal purpose for the universe. Amen po? Christ's victory over death and over the hostile powers of the invisible world, it is absolute and it is final. Now let's go to verse 12. It says here, In whom we have boldness and confident access through faith in Him. Alam niyo po ba mga kapatid, because of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we will find that fellowship with God is now possible. And this fellowship with God that we are now enjoying through our faith in Christ, it is the clearest evidence that God's eternal purpose to unite all things under Christ is already beginning to take place. Amen po? Let me say that again, okay? Our fellowship with God, our boldness and confident access to the presence of God, this relationship with God that we are now enjoying, okay, through our faith in Christ, it is the clearest evidence that God's eternal purpose to unite all things under Christ is already beginning to take place. Sin cursed our world and it destroyed man's relationship with God. There is chaos 
confusion, conflict, hatred, division, wars, pestilence, calamities, etc., etc., in this world. And it is all because of man's rebellion with God. That is why this world is cursed. The curse of sin is the explanation. It is the only explanation why our world is what it is right now. But the gospel of Christ Jesus our Lord is the key for things to be made right between God and man. For man to have peace with God and be restored in fellowship with God. And through faith in Christ, verse 12 says, We have boldness and confident access to God. You know, brothers and sisters, this boldness is the exact opposite of the fear which Adam and Eve possessed after having disobeyed God in Genesis chapter 3. Boldness literally means the freedom to say all. And you do not see that from the very first time that our first parents sinned, disobeyed God, they were filled with fear when God was looking for them. They were no longer filled with the freedom to be open, the freedom to be with God. Instead, because of sin, they were filled with fear in approaching God. Brethren, boldness is having that attitude of openness and freedom, not possessing fear. And believers possess freedom to speak to God in prayer anytime and anywhere. We revere God, but we no longer fear Him. Because God has forgiven us all our sins when we put our faith in Christ and has restored us and reconciled us in our relationship with God. Confident access, on the other hand, is our assurance that we are always welcome to bring our hearts into the presence of God and present to God all our needs. And we can expect a wise and loving response from God, who is now our Father. So brethren, we can already see that everything will be restored by God into perfect harmony under Christ one day. You know why? Because God has already begun that work by restoring us to himself and we enjoy that work of God every day when we come to the Lord in prayer, in worship, and we have this boldness. And we have a confident access to the presence of God. So now let's go to the conclusion of Paul in verse 13. In verse 13, Paul says, Therefore, I ask you not to lose heart at my tribulations on your behalf, for they are your glory. Paul concludes this segment of his letter by encouraging the Ephesians not to be discouraged by his sufferings on their behalf. Paul has given them a mouthful. And because of this, Paul concludes this section by telling them not to lose heart at Paul's imprisonment and sufferings because they were all more than worthwhile. Paul's sufferings were all worth it. When seen in light of God's grace, when seen in light of God's wisdom, and when seen in light of God's eternal purposes. Through Paul's sufferings, the gospel is being proclaimed. And the gospel is bearing fruit through the growth of the church among the Gentiles. In Philippians 1.12, Paul says that his circumstance that his circumstances have turned out for the greater progress of the gospel. So let me end, brethren, by saying that history has its end. 
Meron pong katapusan, mga kapatid, ang kasaysayan po ng tao. Okay? It is not going to go on and on and on. This world tries to imagine a world without end. Where man has to one day explore life in outer space, where all of Earth's natural resources will one day go depleted and so on and so forth. It is a world of hopelessness and despair because the godless teachings and philosophies of this world do not believe God, do not believe that God has an eternal purpose and that God will one day unite all things under Christ. Instead, the godless teaching of this world is that this world is going to go on forever and ever, not of course unless an asteroid hits the earth, but the philosophy and the worldview of this world never considers the eternal plan of God and always thinks that the only thing real in this world is this life here on earth and the material universe. There is no God who holds the entire story, the entire history of man, and who works all things according to the counsel of His will. There is going to be a culmination of history where all the living and the dead will one day be judged by the Lord Jesus Christ. And the church will one day step into a perfect inheritance that has no end. Perhaps you've heard of the story of the three men who were working on a stone pile at a construction site. A curious passerby was eager to discover what was going on. He asked the first worker, What are you doing? And the reply of the first worker was, Chiseling stone. Trying for a better answer, he asked the second worker, What are you doing? And the second worker replied, Earning a living. It was another washout answer. So this curious passerby hoped to find another, another person. He asked the third worker, Sir, what are you doing? And this third worker dropped his sledgehammer, stood erect, and with a gleam in his eye exclaimed, I am building a great cathedral. All three men were doing the same job, but only one of them saw how his role fit into a larger and a more important vision. Brothers and sisters, glory be to God because God called us, God saved us, and God included us into His church. We should therefore see our life fitting into God's eternal purpose and vision for the church. And like Paul, we could tell ourselves and others not to lose heart because of our tribulations, because they are all leading to glory. Amen? And that glory, my dear brothers and sisters, is certain because God is is working all things according to the counsel of His will. Now, if you are listening to the sermon today and you still do not know where you truly belong, if you truly belong to God and His church or you are still afloat in this world, living without a purpose, living without a sense of direction, and not knowing where your soul will go after you die. I hope and pray that you will take a step of faith today. You will believe Christ, the Son of God, and you will receive Jesus Christ, and by faith accept the free gift of salvation that He offers to all. Before we end in prayer, let us first sing a song of worship to the Lord.
pure and blameless in His sight, He destined us to be. And now we've been adopted through His Son eternal. To the praise of Your glory, to the praise of Your mercy and grace, and thank the Lord for His Word today. I hope and pray that we have been truly enlightened by the eternal purpose of God for the church. So let's come before God in ending prayer. Our Father who is in heaven, we thank you for all that you have revealed to us today. Father, indeed, it is from your word that we will find our hope in this life and our hope for, fu for the future. Father in heaven, we thank you, O Lord God, that by your mercy and grace, Lord, you fill us with wisdom and knowledge so that we would understand these, these things, Lord. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that has aided us our understanding all throughout this time Lord this hour of listening to your word marami pong salamat Panginoon hindi po namin ito magagagap at maintindihan Panginoon kung hindi po dahil sa tulong ng banal na spirito na nagbubukas ng aming isip marami pong salamat Panginoon and Father in heaven indeed we pray that these eternal truths O Lord will impact O oh Lord God, our mindset, it will impact, O oh Lord, our perspective and how we view all things in this world. Knowing, O oh Lord, that you have called us the church, O oh Lord. You have thought of us, you have planned about us, Lord, even before the foundation of this world. And Lord, we as your church, Lord God, are part of your eternal purpose even after time has already ended. 
Salamat po, Panginoon. Father in heaven, we are overwhelmed and we are in awe, O God, of your grand vision for the church. Indeed, O Lord, we are humbled and we are, O Lord, filled with thanksgiving and praise. Just like Paul, O Lord God, O Lord, who praises you and who is filled with thanksgiving, O Lord God, and who prays that we might be filled, O Lord, with a spirit of wisdom and revelation so that we may know the hope of our calling, the riches of our inheritance, and the surpassing power that is at work now in us, O Lord. And that power is the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Salamat po, Panginoon. Father in heaven, we commit to you, O Lord, the testimony of each one of us, the testimony, Lord, of your church, O Lord, that you will continue, Lord God, to empower us, O Lord, to live worthy of our calling. And we thank you and praise you, Father God, for you've given us all that we need so that we may live this life, O Lord, in godliness, in purity. We may live this life, Lord, according to your purposes, O Lord, always in light of your sovereign plan. Marami pong salamat, Panginoon. And Father God, for those of us, Lord, who are going through tribulations or trials or the daily challenges of life. Help us, O Lord, to say with Paul that we will not be discouraged, O Lord God, by these sufferings. It is our prayer, Lord, that you would use, O Lord, all these difficulties and all these challenges, O Lord, for our circumstances to even cause the gospel, O Lord, to bear fruit for our circumstances, O Lord God, to show forth the grace of God that is at work in our lives. Salamat po, Panginoon. Father, we also commit to you, dear Lord God, Lord, our personal prayer lives, our inner life, O Lord, that every time, Lord God, we have boldness and confident access to go into your presence, Lord, to enter right into your presence. Lord, may this always be a hopeful assurance to us that, Lord, we are having a foretaste of that perfect future where everything will be under the rulership of Jesus Christ, where everything will be restored to what you have intended, O Lord God, this whole universe to be, O Lord God, which is, Lord, to be perfect and to always display the glory of who you are. Salamat po, Panginoon. Lord, we are just filled with awe and with thanks for all that you have revealed to us today. And we pray that we may be faithful stewards of the mystery of the church, the mystery of Christ. And Father, may you continue, Lord God, to be glorified in our lives. And may you continue, O Lord God, Lord, to use each one of us, O Lord, to showcase the manifold wisdom of God. Salamat po, Panginoon. We also pray to you, Pray, Father in heaven, for gospel of grace and for all the other local churches here in the Philippines and all around the world. Father in heaven, we know, Lord, that your power will never allow, O God, any force, O Lord, any hindrance to ever overcome your work in the church. We pray for your constant upholding upon all the pastors, all the missionaries, O oh God, Father in heaven, all those men and women, O oh Lord, who are serving you, Lord God, in the field, O oh Lord, all those men and women who are serving you, Lord, even in their secular jobs, Father in heaven, we pray for your 
gracious anointing and upholding, O God, upon your church. Maraming marami pong salamat, Panginoon. Father in heaven, we entrust also to you, Lord. Father God, our homes, our families, our loved ones, especially those who have not yet known Christ personally and who have not yet received Him who do not still know Christ as the Savior and Lord of their lives, we pray that you will work in their hearts and that they will truly become genuine followers of Jesus Christ. Marami pong salamat, Panginoon. Nawa ang inyo pong pagpapala, ang inyo pong kabutihan ng siyang pumuno lamang sa puso ng bawat isa na nakikinig po sa mga sandali nito. Maraming marami pong salamat, Panginoon. Maingat po namin, Father God, na ibinabalik lamang sa pangalan po ninyo ang lahat po ng papuri, kaluwalhatian at pagsamba. Ito po ang aming panalangin sa matamis at makapangyarihang pangalan ng aming Panginoong Jesus. Amen and Amen. A blessed Sunday morning, brothers and sisters. Thank you for joining us here at our online Sunday worship service. May God's grace, may God's, may Jesus' love, and may the fellowship of the Holy Spirit always overflow in our lives. May you have a blessed time with your loved ones today. God bless you and God keep you safe all throughout the week. Salamat po.